Guys, welcome back to another episode. We are far in the remote mountains. I've got the backpack, the tent, the fishing gear, everything with me. We're heading up to a couple of small mountain lakes. We're gonna be fishing for trout. We'll see what else lives in there. I've got another suspicion of something else that's in there that we can try and catch and eat for food. But man, just look at this place. It's absolutely beautiful. You can see this whole forest burnt down several years ago and now all that's left is the old burnt pine trees and lots of luscious green undergrowth. As you can see, there's a storm brewing behind me and we gotta beat that storm, hopefully. The weather can change from beautiful to really ugly within just minutes. All right, let's go, because we got a long day ahead of us and uh, hopefully we can still catch some food that we can eat tonight. Man, something that is just absolutely beautiful in these mountain landscapes is all the wildflowers that grow up here. Ah, oh, that one doesn't smell like a whole lot. Ooh, oh wow, that one there smells amazing. And check this out right here. These little guys are baby pine trees. So all of the old pine trees uh, burnt down, but uh, look at that. There's little baby ones growing here all over the place. It's absolutely loaded with them. We made it out of the completely burnt area. You can see a lot more of the trees here are alive, even though they were scored by the fire. You can see the ashes that they still have on their, their barks, but the tree itself is still alive up there. It's absolutely beautiful. And I'm keeping my eye open out here for mushrooms because I'm seeing a lot of them. I just haven't found any edible ones yet. You can see that the sky actually cleared up a little bit. The storm has passed this way and uh, hopefully <laughs> the good weather comes in so that we can have a nice evening. Here we go, there's some mushrooms right here. Check these little guys out. Look at these cute little mushrooms here. I'm not exactly sure what that species is though. Uh, oh, oh, look at this. There's wild strawberry plants right next to the mushrooms. Wow, that's amazing. That means later in the season, we could harvest wild strawberries out here. Oh, there's another one of those mushrooms. This one's a little bit bigger than the other ones, but uh, since we can't ID these guys, we're gonna leave them alone. Oh, wow, a bush full of, oh, oh it's full of magical flowers. Whew. We've arrived. We're really close to the lake. Uh, you can hear a waterfall in the background there that flows down into the lake. And I think this right here looks like a perfect spot to set up camp. Oh, man, there's like, oh, there's a thousand mosquitoes around me right now. We gotta get this tent set up ASAP. Oh, geez, I'm being eaten alive. We're gonna need to find a couple of sticks in order to set up this tent. Something, uh, this one here might work. Uh, I'll make good firewood though. All right, we need these sticks for uh, the tent because the tent doesn't have tent poles. Instead it uses uh, like trekking poles, which I didn't bring. Now in uh, your backpack, it's always a good idea to keep your sleeping bag and your mattress just separate from the rest. That way we can pull that all out uh, without having to fish through the rest of our gear. We can set up camp and just get straight out of here. Now these lightweight air mattresses with no foam inside, they're amazing because they don't weigh anything. But let me tell you, I had one pop once on a backpacking trip, a five day trip, and it popped on night number one. So <laughs> I slept on the solid ground for uh, 
what was that, four nights or something? Whew, man, that was an experience. That being said, I had used that mattress for a long time, so I picked up another one of these guys, and uh, so far this one's been going strong. Yeah, one thing we always want to make sure we do is just set up uh, our tent uh, before going out and having fun that way. Later, we don't need to think about anything anymore. We can just come in here, lay down and crash. But oh my goodness, there are so many mosquitoes in here already. All right, the tent is all set up, but man, I'm getting absolutely eaten by bugs. So we're just gonna go ahead and seal up the tent so that none of them can, or not any more can get in there. There's already a bunch in there that we'll have to take care of later. But uh, I'd say let's go ahead and throw on the pack and uh, just get out of here because oh, there's so many bugs. And uh, we'll try and catch some fish here this evening. And then we just gotta start up a fire to keep the mosquitoes at bay. And look at this burnt out tree right here. It's got like a cave inside of it. I'm sending you in. Anything in there? Hello? <laughs> uh, this is the lake with the mountain beavers. It looks a lot more clear than it was last time we were here. So uh, maybe, maybe it's not stagnant beaver water after all. Okay. Guys, here's the plan. We've got this lake right here and that's the one that we fished in the last episode with the dirty water and the beavers. But there was a hungry trout feeding uh, at the surface down in that lake. But right here behind me, you'll see there's another lake and that water is a lot more clear. I'm seeing a lot of lily pads and stuff as well. But what I'm thinking is that tonight we go ahead and try and get redemption in the beaver pond. And then tomorrow we go to the clear lake and see what we can catch there. Oh man, it's tempting to fish that area back. Oh, there was a fish that just surfaced in that. Hmm. What do you think? A fish did just surface right there, but we're highly likely to get snagged in all of those branches and trees. And even if we do hook one, we might lose them. <laughs> totally worth it. We're going down uh, into the log jam area. Oh, it's beautiful. Okay, this right here is the outflow of the upper lake. Oh, just look at how beautiful. Oh, oh, I spooked a big trout. I didn't expect the big trout being right in here. Okay, guys, I have an idea. I have an idea. I was gonna come here to check out the clarity of the water and it's beautifully clear. And what I think we can do is use this area right here to grab our water that we're gonna filter. I feel very comfortable drinking this right here. But first we're gonna go over here and fish this area. We're gonna give this spot a little bit of a break because that was a decent sized trout in that little creek. And I've kind of got this crazy idea how we could maybe catch that trout on a, on a fly in that little creek, but we gotta sneak up on him and give him just a second to rest. There was another fish that just surfaced right back there. Man, this is gonna be tricky though. There are so many logs stacked on top of each other that uh, if we hook a fish, we're gonna have to keep them up at the surface. This is gonna be really tricky. I'm making so much noise right now. We've gotta be quiet so that we don't spook the fish. The fish can detect motion on land. They can feel uh, the shock waves that we send uh, through the ground into the water. So we're just gonna be nice and stealthy here. I think what we're gonna start with right here is a bullet lure. I've already got them tied to a leader, uh, but I did bring some flies along this time as well. Guys, this could be a really bad idea. This is some challenging, challenging 
uh, water terrain to <laughs> to fish in. There's like there's a very good chance that we could get stuck on something here. Oh, did you just see that a big one just surfaced right there? They're actively feeding right behind me. Oh, there he was again. All right, let's check our drag real quick. And that's way too tight. We're gonna loosen that a little bit. I want about two pounds of pressure or so on there. Someone asked in one of the last videos how to adjust your drag. Uh, in this case, I'm using four pound fluoro as my leader. So I want uh, the drag to release at about two pounds. That way you're not putting too much pressure on your leader. And that way if the fish pulls really hard, there you go. Instead of breaking your leader, it'll just simply pull out a little bit of drag out of your reel. But you also don't want it too light because otherwise the fish can go wherever it wants to. And in this area right here, we need to be able to keep a good firm amount of drag on that fish and it's surfacing right there again. So I'm going to try and sneak in there and cast in that area. Right on him. I, I bumped into like three branches reeling it in. That's going to be a challenge to fish this. Rockfall. Oh, did you guys hear that? Man, why does that keep happening to me out here when I'm in the mountains? Man, casting in this here is like threading the needle. <laughs> yeah. Oh, slammed. Slow, there he is, fish on, baby, fish on. Keep him up, we got, oh no. Oh, he came off, he came off. Oh my goodness, we gotta keep those fish up uh, so that they can't go underneath the log. So I had to put a lot of pressure on him and unfortunately we lost him, but he slammed that bullet lure. Hit it twice too, I could see him smack it once and then he came for it again. And that was a colorful fish that might've been a brook trout. All right, guys, we're gonna need the net. We're gonna need the net. This is very, very exciting all of a sudden. There we go. All right, let's get back out here without falling into the water. The log that I'm standing on is like rolling back and forth too. I don't wanna move it too much as to not spook the fish. There we go. Oh, that was crazy. Absolutely crazy. Do we cast back there again? Or do we, do we try and thread it right back in between here? There we go. Oh, nope. That was almost into the trees. All right, all right. Perfect cast. Come on, baby. Oh, there's another hungry trout. That's two trout surface back there. There's a lot of them here, guys. There's a lot of fish in here. Yeah, let's just try and go back here one more time. Maybe there's another one hanging out with them. Oh, <sighs> had a bite, had a bite. Didn't hook up though, didn't hook up. Let's try and cast again. Maybe he didn't, uh, maybe he didn't get pricked and he'll bite again. Trout, once they get hooked once, they usually don't want to bite again. Oh, there he is, fish on, fish on. They're biting on every cast, guys, every cast. Okay, let's play this one here a little bit more. That's a beautiful, looks like a beautiful brook trout. Oh, there he goes. Get him over the logs. We gotta get him over the logs, between the logs. Oh, oh my, oh my goodness. PB Brook Trot, PB Brook Trot. Yes, look at that. Oh, he's beautiful. He's beautiful. Look at that Brook Trout. There you go, lure popped right out. I right, just went ahead and put that guy right out of his misery. That guy choked the bullet lure. Look at this beautiful, beautiful brook trout. This here, while not being a giant, is actually the biggest brook trout that I've ever caught. So what's really interesting about these brook trout right here is that they're not actually uh, a trout. These guys are in the family of char. So they're like a cousin to the trout. Look at the beautiful markings on this fish. They have beautiful red spots, red fins with the white stripes and those white stripes in front of their fins. That's actually how you can tell uh, that these guys are in the char family. Oh, buddy. Thank you so much for providing a wonderful meal for us tonight. This guy's gonna be delicious. And we finally solved the mystery of the mountain beaver lake. Now I wonder if there's like rainbow trout or cutthroat trout or something like that in here as well. I cannot resist 
uh, giving that another try. Man, guys, they're still surfacing everywhere out here. All right, we're gonna go ahead and try casting over there. Tricky, very tricky. We're gonna fish the lure right up at the surface. Oh, something hit it, something hit it again. That was two hits right there, didn't hook up. Man, it is absolutely, lo I cannot believe how many trout are in here. I mean, this is just crazy. I wonder if they're all brook trout. We're just immediately reeling. We're keeping that lure way up at the surface. What if we just cast over into that spot there again? There we go. Oh, there he is again! <laughs> There's so many fish back there. <laughs> what is this? That is insane. I can't believe how many trout are hanging out back there. Oh, that was a really dangerous cast. I'm, we're probably gonna hook up. Oh, there's a bite. Oh, there's a bite. Oh, I'm kind of glad we didn't hook up there. We were kind of around that tree and uh, I really don't want to lose that lure either. Oh, another one jumped way out there. Let's go ahead and cast way, way out there. Oh, this is gonna be another tricky one. Nope, nope, no takers there. I was cast back into the honey hole. <laughs> oh no, I'm stuck on the tree. I'm stuck on the tree. No, 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 no. Oh no. Okay, come on, baby. Come on, no, no. Oh, there we go, we got him back, got him back. Ah, oh, man, that little branch down there is totally in the way. Oh, let's get that sucker way back in there again. Come on, baby. Come on. Oh, there he is, that's a bite. Man, I, I wonder if there's a bunch of little ones back there or something. Come on, where there's bites, there's a fish. Oh, I am so stuck up on that tree right there. Oh no, and I hooked up. We're stuck in the tree and hooked up with a fish. That's a good brookie. That's a good brookie. Oh no, oh no, oh no, oh no. I'm gonna have to get at a better angle. Oh no, he's in the tree. The brook trout is in the tree. Oh no, we're gonna have to yeet him over the tree, guys. We're... Oh no, oh no, what a disaster. Oh, we're lifting the brookie. Oh, geez, look at that. Oh, no. Come on. We gotta bring him up the tree. We're gonna have to try and like boat flip him. No. Oh, there he is, there he is, baby fish on. Oh, come here. <laughs> oh, it's a big one. Oh, geez, my drag is broken on this one. Come here. Oh, oh in the net, baby. In the net, that's another beautiful brook trout. That is a beauty. There we go. All right, just put that one to sleep right away. What a beautiful, beautiful brook trout. Guys, this one is definitely bigger than, uh, than the last one. One thing you can see with uh, char is that their mouth is extremely large, way bigger uh, than a trout's mouth. That's another easy way that you can tell that it's a char. Sorry, buddy, that we had to flip you like that. That was crazy. I was stuck up in the tree and then he bit down there in the water. <laughs> oh, that was nuts. I didn't want that to happen. He's maybe about an inch longer than the first one. I might actually just call it a night because look at this. This is a beautiful meal that we've already got right here. I've got a little bit of other food with me too. So I think we're good. Uh, for today and then tomorrow we might fish this lake a little bit more and we're gonna fish that creek and see if we can catch uh, that trout that was in the creek and then we're gonna go over to the other lake and see what happens there. All right to clean him we're gonna use the mini cleaver and uh, we're just gonna start him right back here. Go ahead and see what's in their stomach. It's something I haven't checked in a while. I want to know what they're eating up here. What? Oh, a giant leech. I, I've, I've never seen a leech this big in my life. 
Geez, years ago when I was in Indonesia on the island of Bali, we were up in the rainforest. Our guide told us that there would be leeches in the bushes and we'd need to watch out for them. So I put my foot into the bushes and sure enough, my foot came out with a bunch of leeches attached to it. This was probably a really bad idea, but I put them in a container, took them to the hotel with me, kept feeding them on my hand and brought them back to Germany, which is where I lived at the time. Pretty sure that probably wasn't legal or anything, so don't do that. <laughs> But, uh, but those leeches were maybe half the size of this one. Oh, that's gross and cool at the same time. I'm almost thinking that we could use that leech as bait tomorrow. That would be awesome. There we go, one little cut. And then pull that head and all the guts will just come right out with it. Then all we gotta do is just score the kidney back there, that's that dark line. Push it out with your thumb. And there we go, that's one clean, brook trout and man the meat look at that it is absolutely beautifully red on this fish oh, guys i don't know if uh you can tell but over there i think in the water i see a dead crawdad so uh what i'm almost thinking is we should keep those trout guts and tomorrow we could try and use that as bait to try and catch some some crawdads as well, that would be delicious. We're just gonna collect a little bit of water. Just trying to gather the cleanest water possible. All right, awesome. That's two liters of uh, mildly clean water, but we've got the filter with us. really wondering if we should keep that leech or not. I don't really have anything to put it into. All right, we're back at camp, but we gotta go ahead and collect some firewood and get a fire going right away because I am being eaten by mosquitoes. Oh, here we go. Check this out, there's actually a fire pit here at this uh, this campsite, so that's awesome. We can go ahead and cook our trout just right up on top of there. Yeah, the mosquitoes are getting me. We need the fire so badly. A couple of episodes ago, uh, we collected some uh, tree sap from a burnt forest, and we still have all of that sap with us. It actually melted together a little bit. This right here is my fire tin. It's got uh, some cotton balls right here that are soaked with a little bit of Vaseline. And then we're just gonna take some of that sap right there. Look at that nice, thick chunk. Oh man, oh, my knife is in the backpack. Maybe, maybe this rock here could start a fire. Oh, oh yeah, there we go. <laughs> Worked perfectly. Ooh, hot. There we go. I'm just gonna take that sap and lay it right over the flames. Now that sap is dripping down and it just burns like crazy. Oh, yes. Oh, awesome. Smoke, get away from me, mosquitoes. Oh. Here, take that little mosquito. Unbelievable. Man, just look at that beautiful mountain sunset. <laughs> the sky is absolutely on fire right now.
What a beautiful sunset. And what's even more beautiful is that the mosquitoes are finally gone. I don't use bug spray. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. I don't like the chemicals on me. I like to keep things natural, but uh, a nice smoky fire keeps the mosquitoes away every time. Uh, we got our water right here. And uh, then this guy right here, this is my water filter. Uh, this guy's just a little Sawyer. Again, I'll have all the links to the stuff in the video description uh, below if you guys wanna check it out. But this here is my favorite water filter in the world. In the last episode, we used the Life Straw. We had some issues with the Life Straw. And uh, when you're out in the mountains, you gotta be able to trust your gear 100%. But let me show you something that's really cool about this water filter. Uh, it comes with like a little bag that you can fill with water and then you can drink out of the bag. And you've seen me do that in a lot of the past uh, episodes up in the mountains. This is your little drinking nipple right there. But this is what's really cool about this water filter. This is just a standard two liter bottle. Take the lid off. <laughs> so this filter here screws on to two liter bottles or even like your standard Coke bottles and stuff like that. And then fresh water, baby. Oh man, yes. What I do is get this fire kind of more under. Oh, 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 whoa! Gotta move this whole fire underneath the grate here. So we're just gonna lower that grate down into the flames, and what that heat will do is it'll sterilize the surfaces. All right, we got our clean fish right there. A couple of bratwursts right there. It's gonna be amazing. We have a couple of garlic and herb tortillas. We'll save the uh, garlic and onion and butter for tomorrow. I have a really good idea for the crawdads uh, with those guys. And yeah, we're gonna take one bratwurst. One bratwurst will come with us here and join us at the fire. He's gonna be a happy bratwurst right here. Ooh, he's singing to us. Now we're gonna take our trout, throw it right onto the grate like that. Ooh, hot. <laughs> we're gonna have to raise this a little bit. It's a bit hot right now. And then the only seasoning that we're gonna throw on that trout is some Danish sea salt. Oh my goodness, there we go. Absolutely beautiful. I'm actually gonna take a little bit and smear it on the inside of the trout as well. Wow, that's hot. Ooh. Oh wow, beautiful. Ooh, that is hot. I just heard something in the woods. And guys, that brings me to scary campfire story time. In the last episode, uh, a lot of you guys in the comments wanted to hear some of the scariest stories and experiences that I've had out solo in the mountains. <laughs> Ooh, my, my pants got really hot there. <laughs> Okay, let's just get into this. So something that happened a couple of episodes ago, um, and you guys saw it there, and it happened probably last, no, it happened two years ago, uh, up at a mountain lake too, is that I've been standing at the shore of lakes. All of a sudden, large boulders will roll up out of the mountains and come crashing down the hillside. Oh, there's another one. There's, there's boulders rolling down the hill there. A lot of you guys in the comments have mentioned that that could be Sasquatch up in the mountains uh, that's angry about people being in his territory and therefore is throwing things down at us and causing those rock slides. Now personally, I've never seen Sasquatch, but what about you? Have you guys had any Sasquatch experiences? Drop it in the comments below. Let me go ahead and just flip this bratwurst a little bit. All right, now here's something that happens to me quite frequently in the mountains. And uh, it's made my heart stop a few times. Man, just thinking about it is kind of giving me goosebumps right now. One of the things that's probably hardest about being solo in the mountains is being alone at night. Now it's bad enough if you're in your camp around your tent with a fire being all alone at night. Uh, and honestly, it can be pretty nice. But what's not so fun is if you have to hike through the night, if you get caught somewhere in the mountains or if you have to make it out of the mountains um, and you have to do it in pitch black with a headlamp, climbing down 
sketchy trails going through the forest. So in my area, we have lots of bears, we have uh, coyotes, we do have wolves in this area right here. And the one that gets me the most is we have mountain lions. Now, if you guys have never heard about a mountain lion before, well, it's exactly as it sounds. Imagine lions that live up here in the mountains and their eyes glow pretty well at night. It's like a cat. So I was coming down a mountain after filming actually uh, an episode uh, for YouTube and I uh, had to make it back down to the car uh, that night and I'd just gotten super sidetracked fishing. So I was running late, it got completely dark uh, and I was going down the mountainside and coming through a patch of forest. So I turn around this corner and as I turn around the corner, the light of my headlamp all of a sudden reflects two green glowing eyes staring at me and it just froze my heart. I had like, it was the most intense goosebumps I've ever had. It was like a shower and then I looked closer and it moved and all of a sudden I could see it was a deer staring straight at me. And guys, I can't tell you how often the deer scare me when I'm out by myself in the woods. Their eyes reflect just like a mountain lion. It's unbelievable. So, so far I have never actually run into a mountain lion while out uh, backpacking. There was one time I was coming back from fly fishing at a river uh, and I was in the truck at that time and driving and I did see uh, a large shadow of a cat jump across the road, maybe 50 to 60 yards uh, feet in front of me. And I immediately stopped the car, jumped out, tried to see uh, the mountain lion because I recognized it had a long tail. I thought it was a bobcat at first, but it had a really long bushy tail. Tried looking into the woods to spot the line, but it vanished. Okay, I think we're doing our final flip on that bratwurst. We can move that baby, flip our fish again. Mm -mm -mm. Man, guys, why are you doing this to me? Why are you making me talk about scary stories while I'm out here by myself? The sun's pretty much completely gone. The stars are coming out, but I'm getting the goosebumps, the heebie-jeebies. Okay, only one more scary story for tonight, and then we'll do more scary stories at future mountain campfires. Was this on that same trip? Oh, that was a scary trip. There are just some places that have a weird energy to them. And I remember I was at uh, this lake, and this was actually on camera. I'll roll in the clip uh, of what happened. I was just down at the lake doing a little bit of night fishing for some trout and I was down on the beach in the dark when all of a sudden a loud shriek sounded. All right, I think it's about time that we give them a flip. What the? Did you? Did you just hear that? Now it turns out that that shriek is from like some species of owl. What kind of owl makes a freaky noise like that? That, like they shouldn't be doing that to us up there. Oh, look at that, there's a little bee crawling around on me. Hi, buddy. <laughs> look at that, there's a bee right here. Buddy, let's get you away. I don't want you falling in the fire. <laughs> Friendly little guy. Ooh, man, it's a little on the crispy side here, guys. But I think it's, oh, look at the meat. Oh, it's falling off the bones. Look at those trout and a brat. Let's take a bite of one of those uh, trout tails right here. Mm hmm. A little crispy, a little dry. <laughs> yeah, the fish is so hot. Just want to make sure it falls off the bones. That means it's cooked all the way. Mmm. The meat is really, really firm. It's got that red color, so it does have a little bit of that salmon-y flavor. Mm. Ooh. Golden crispy. I'm just gonna throw. <laughs> oh man, that tortilla is hot. <laughs> All right, guys, cheers. Mmm, mmm, mmm. The tortilla has like garlic and herbs in it. It doesn't get any better than that. All right, we're gonna throw that brat into the tortilla here. Look at that. 
Man, that's gonna be absolutely delicious. A cheddar cheese brat. Watch out, guys. My inner German's coming out. Mmm. Mmm. Alles hat ein Ende, nur die Wurst hat zwei. Die Wurst hat zwei. <laughs> yeah. That's some German wisdom right there. Everything has an end. Except for a sausage that has two. Oh, man. All right, you guys, I'm gonna get a little bit of sleep. Ah, we'll see you guys in the morning. You guys, it's been a long time since we have shared a cup of mountain coffee together. You can actually see uh, the lake right down there. So we'll head back down there, see if we can maybe catch another trout there. Otherwise, we'll just go to the other lake. I'm really excited actually to find out what species of fish live in that second lake and maybe catch a couple crawdads. I stashed that fish head and the guts under this rock right here. Ah, all right. Oh, there's a bunch of ants all over it. Get off of there, little guys. Those are my fish guts. <laughs> oh man, it's so tempting to just go back between those logs and just fish that same exact spot. But uh, we're gonna check out a new spot today. Let's see if there's a trout hanging out in the creek. We're gonna sneak up on him. All right, nice and slow. 
do not want to spook any fish. Do you guys see anything down there? I don't see anything yet, but what we're going to do is set up our crawdad bait, that trout head with the guts. And I think we'll put it right there in front of you. That way the smells can kind of flow downstream and those crawdads might come up and take our bait. And then we can try and catch the crawdads. Let's get our stinky fish head out of here. <laughs> Man, it definitely, oh, oh, it's a little stinky. Let's put that in the water. Right here, I think should be a good spot. What do you think? Can you guys see the, the head pretty good right there? We'll see if some crawdads come in. You guys keep an eye on that bait. Man, I hope we get one. Look at this, this is all just lily pads right here. It looks a little stagnant in this area. I did just see something surface over there. Might just be an angry beaver. Let's go ahead and just try a couple of casts here. But I just found right there at the shore an old nasty crawdad. Oh, like, oh. <coughs> oh, he stinks so bad. Oh man, one just surfaced right there. One surfaced right there. I think we're gonna need the net. Guys, we might not even need to go out there. We might do that in a whole nother episode where we go out, uh, I'll pack up like a backpacking kayak. That, oh, that's a great idea. Like a miniature inflatable lightweight kayak that we can carry up to the lakes here. And then we'll launch it here and paddle it out to the deep end. And then today we just fished these lily pads, try and get some crawdads. Oh man, let me know in the comments if you guys want to see another video where I pack up a kayak. <gasps> yes, a fish just surfaced out there. We got to do that. We got to do that. That'll be a future episode though. Man, if there's a trout. Oh, oh one just surfaced back there. One surfaced back there. He actually snapped at something. Just gotta get out to this spot. Oh, something just, oh my goodness, hello. Hello, buddy. Look at this little guy, there's a little frog right there. <laughs> oh, man, reaching in the water, I gotta make sure I don't get leeches all over myself. Except then we could get one as bait, maybe. Oh, there we go. There we go, that's where I wanna be. That's where I wanna be, come on, baby. Come on, right over those logs. Water's like three inches deep right there. Water's three inches deep. It's a real challenge to make sure that the lure doesn't like sink up or sink down and get snagged up on the bottom. But right by those trees, I saw one there. Oh, there he is, fish on baby. Oh. He came off. Little guy. He's just a little guy. Everyone calm down. Wow, that was awesome. <laughs> what a cool place to catch trout. I can't believe this. That is crazy. Let's send her right back in there. Catch his big brother. Come on. It is a challenge to get it in there. Let's see if we can shoot the lure in there. There we go. That's exactly where we want to be. Exactly where we want to be. Come on, baby, come on. Come on, oh, there he is. Oh, oh, he snapped at it, didn't take it. Didn't take it, didn't take it. Let's do that again, we'll fire that baby right in there. One just surfaced right back there, let's slingshot that baby. Right there in the honey hole, right in the honey hole. That's where he is, come on, baby. Oh, come on, come on, come on. Oh, oh I didn't take it that time, didn't take it that time. There he is, we can shoot it right over there at that log. Oh no, oh no. Oh, oh, that was bad. That was really bad. 
that bullet lure is. <laughs> uh, oh, okay. Well, all right, let's not spook the fish. We'll come back here. We'll come back with the kayak and then we'll save the lure. Oh. All right, he's hanging right up there in that branch. We'll, we'll be able to come back and get it. We'll come back and get it in another episode with the kayak. Ooh. Look at this little guy here. It's not exactly what I'm looking for, but it uh, looks pretty juicy. It's like a little, almost like a dragonfly larva. All right, we got a slip float tied up right here. It's bobber time. We're gonna set it really shallow. And then uh, on the business end down here, we have one of those weird, creepy little, little things. They look exactly like a dragonfly larva, but a little smaller. So maybe it's a tiny species of dragonfly or it's something else. You guys can let me know in the comments. But we just got them on the hook like that. And uh, we're gonna cast that guy out there and see if a hungry trout wants to take him. All right, I'm thinking we sneak back over here with the bobber. I'm so excited, it's bobber time. And uh, what do you think? We fish right here? I think that's the last place where I saw them surface. I haven't seen a whole lot of action here uh, right now, but that's okay, that could change. Oh, right there, that's the spot. Uh, when we're fishing insects like that at these mountain lakes, these trout are smart and they've got really good eyes. And especially with clear water like this, they can see exactly what's going on. So using small hooks is super important when you're fishing live insects. Maybe we spook this area with uh, getting that bullet lure stuck there. All right, nice and easy, we're gonna sneak out. There's one right there. Oh, right on him, right on him. There was one that surfaced right over there. the bug. Dang it. Oh, there's another one. Oh, oh, yes, yes. Here it is. Here it is. This is what we want. Got him. Got him. Oh. Right, replace that to the water. Here he is. That is one scary looking little bug, but this is the best trout bait in the world. The dragonfly larva. <laughs> Look at this little guy. Okay, you guys know this is about to be fire. Dragonfly larva under the bobber. Oh, there he is. There he is. Whew. All right, while we have this dragonfly larva, we're actually going to head back to that other lake and we'll come back here in a future episode with the backpacking kayak to get further out there. I think these are a bunch of little fish between the lilies and the big ones might be out in the deep. So uh, we'll be back. Make sure of course that you guys are subscribed. Uh, if you're still brand new, that way you don't miss that new episode when it comes out. Uh, climb underneath all these trees. Uh, oh. Let's see if there's any crawdads. I'm not seeing any crawdads. I'm seeing that the head did move. It fell, either fell off. Guys, what happened? What happened? I don't know what happened. Did you guys see anything? Oh, we got our fish head. And I have no idea what happened there while I was gone. So you guys know more than me right now. saw one surface back there. The visibility is way better 
uh, this time around than it was last time. Probably three to four feet of visibility now. So, plus we have our dragonfly larva right here. We're just gonna cast that baby right out there and see what happens. Guys, the beaver is right in front of us. I don't know if he actually sees us. I think he might not know that we're here. He's right here. He's right here. Oh, he knows what's up. Look at the beavers just chilling right there in front of us. Almost like he wants to like hang out. Oh, oh no, sorry buddy. Oh, why don't you want to hang out with us? Oh, oh man. All right, that's okay, we're gonna fish. Oh, he splashed. He splashed his tail at us. That's how the beaver thanks us. Very typical. Typical beavers. Fish just jumped right there. Beaver is still chilling right there next to us. I'm not sure exactly what he's up to, um, but that's okay. He can hang out with us while we're fishing. Living his best life up here in this lake. A lucky little guy. You know, while that bobber's fishing there, um, I'll just take that fish head and we're just gonna plop it right here. Right there where we can kind of keep an eye on it and see if anything comes into him. Oh, the bobber just went down. Bobber just went down. Bobber went down. Come on, baby. Come on. Oh, it's down. It's down. Come on. Take it. Please do not have taken that dragonfly. We've only got one of them. <sighs> come on, baby. <gasps> there he is. There he is. There he is. Come on. Come on. Waiting for it to go all the way down. No, no, he took it, he took it. Oh guys, it's crushing my soul, crushing my soul where, no, no, we had a juicy bobber down and we missed it. Oh, let's see if there's more dragonflies here. So far, no crawdads on that fish head, by the way. All we gotta do is just flip over a bunch of little, little sticks and stones. Oh my goodness, look at what I just got. A little baby crawdad. That is perfect. Oh, he's got red claws too. I think that's an invasive species so we can use this little guy as bait right here. This guy is a perfect, perfect bait size. Oh, look at him, look at him go. There we go, there we go. Crawdad on the hook. <laughs> that is not what I expected to find right there. I thought we were gonna find a little dragonfly larva if we're lucky. Out he goes, same spot. All right, he's just gonna be down there twitching around, dancing, giving the trout a show. Oh, maybe we gotta sit here and actually watch this and not mess around with the other, the other rod. Oh, oh, there we go, there we go. Something hit him. It might just be a little trout right here. There might be one that's just kind of messing with us and stealing our bait. probably going after little flies at the surface. I think we really should come back here with uh, the fly pole. Maybe we could fish some tiny dry flies. Bobber down. Bobber down. Oh, it was down all the way. All the way. Oh, that one couldn't resist that crawdad. Oh, lost the crawdad though. There's a crawdad chewing on the trout head. Ah, 
all right, all right. He turned on me. He turned on me. I thought he was going to get me. <laughs> <laughs> all right, that's awesome, though. There are big crawdads in this lake here. That means we could come back up here and try and get a bunch of big crawdads and, uh, and cook them up. That guy was big. That was a good-sized crawdad. All right, I went ahead and tied up my last bullet lure, so we're going to fish that. They're definitely surfacing over here a lot. They're just not as hot after the bobber here. Oh my goodness, look at that. Come on, mate. Come on, baby. Come on, come on, come on, come on back. Oh, oh there's another one that just might, or I uh, jumped. Come on. Come on, baby. Perfect, perfect, perfect one just surfaced right in front of us. Come on, baby, come on. Fish on, fish on, on the bull. Good one, good one. Always oh, wrapping us, wrapping us. Oh, come on, get out of the bush. Oh, we're in the bush. We are in the bush. Oh, we're flipping one again. I, th I can't believe this is happening. I can't believe this is happening. Oh, what species is that? That might be something else. That might be another fish. Oh. Come on, come on. Is that a cutthroat? Is that a cutthroat? There we are, there we are. He's loose, he's loose. All right, we gotta get back to our net now. Back to the net. There we are. Oh, oh, oh. Oh, oh, it is a cutthroat. Ew. Oh, it's a, a west slope cutthroat. Yes. Oh, he's beautiful. He's absolutely beautiful. All right, this guy here, he already spit the bullet lure. Uh, he was barely hooked, so we're actually not going to keep this guy. We're not going to keep him. He's a, such a beautiful fish. All right, wet our hand before we handle him. Uh, it's a west slope cutthroat trout. You can tell it's a cutthroat because of the red marking under their mouth. And then it's a west slope because he doesn't have a whole lot of spots there by the belly. Let him breathe here for a second. Oh, there he is. And he's off. West slope cutty on the bull lure. What a beautiful, beautiful end to the day. Beaver's still kind of swimming around, but that's all I got for you guys in this one. I think uh, we're gonna come out very soon. I'll bring the uh, fly pull along. We'll bring the backpacking kayak and uh, we'll try and catch some crawfish. We'll do a crawfish boil out here. I'll probably be back here either in the next or one of the next episodes. There's some other mountain lakes I gotta get up to as well. Uh, so of course, make sure that you guys are subscribed so you don't miss any of those summer adventures. It's mountain time again, guys. Uh, the best time of the year. So that's all I got for you guys. Leave a like on the video, drop a comment. I'll see you guys in the comment section and we'll see y'all very soon for the next one. And until then, you all know it, fish on, baby.